A new study found hate crimes targeting Jewish people get less media coverage than hate crimes aimed at other minority groups. The report reveals a disturbing disparity and the danger it's causing in the vulnerable community. Media watchdog HonestReporting.com finds the number of published articles between 2018 and 2020 detailing hate crimes against Jews is only half of those reported impacting blacks and Hispanics. It's roughly a quarter of the number of incidents written about Muslims. Asian American groups have expressed a similar frustration about underrepresented coverage. Researchers say when the media shines a spotlight on hate crimes against certain minorities, the attacks appear to decline. However, vulnerable groups are targeted when the media neglects or downplays crimes against them. For more on this, Daniel Pomerantz joins us here to discuss more. He is the CEO of HonestReporting.com. Daniel, so good to have you here. Thank your, you, Nikki. This reporting is so important. Yeah. Your organization reveals that Jews have the highest hate crimes against them, yet minimal me media coverage. Why do you think that is? Well, I think it's because we've moved in a direction of narrative. We're often reporting not what is happening, but what's hot or the story that we want to tell. And the problem with that is that some groups end up being neglected when we do that. Now, there's good news that the hate crimes against Islamophobia became a hot topic. It got a huge amount of coverage over the past uh, several years, and those hate crimes have begun to decline. So what we see is not only does neglecting groups cause damage, but when you shine a spotlight on hate crimes, it actually can make our country a better place for our most vulnerable groups. Let's talk more about that. I mean, how specifically do you think this lack of reporting affects Jewish people? Well, it has a very strong effect. For example, last May there was a war in uh, Gaza between Hamas, which is a U.S.-designated terror organization that oppresses Palestinians and attacks Israelis, and Israel. And because there was a lot of misunderstanding about this, a lot of Jews were subject to assaults, both verbal and physical. And oftentimes it was under the guise of what they said was criticism of Israeli policies. Well, it should go without saying that when you assault someone, that's not criticism of anything. That's just assaulting American people. And then what happened recently with Whoopi Goldberg, she said that, you know, the Holocaust wasn't about race. It was just a couple groups of white people. Now, I don't blame Whoopi Goldberg for what's happening here, but what she said is a symptom of an overall culture in which hate against some groups is not considered as important or not considered racism at all. And as we've seen, when we do that, it causes damage to come to those groups. And not just Jews, by the way. Asian Americans' uh, hate crimes are up almost double what they were three years ago. LGBTQ and Americans with disabilities are suffering similar problems. I was really struck by your report because I sometimes wonder if media coverage actually motivates people. School shootings as an example. Yeah. In your reporting, you also learned that LGBTQ community, special needs community are facing a similar problem. Yeah. What are you doing? What can be done to help decrease these hate crimes against Jews, to get them the attention that is needed? Yeah, you know, it's a common concern among law enforcement that if you publicize it, there could be copycat attacks. And I don't want to speak for, I'm not a security expert, and I don't want to speak to that. And I'd never ask a community to put themselves in danger. But what we found with our macro level data, which, by the way, the whole research report is available at honest, honestreporting.com, what we found from this data is that when you shine a spotlight, it does cause these attacks to decrease over the course of a year or two. Now, when you talk about, um, when you talk about uh, hate, it's, it's something that we, we usually think of the FBI, we think of policy, we think of security and police. And I think it's actually an encouraging thing to know that just by talking and just by working with the media, we can actually make the world a better place for the most vulnerable groups in our country. It's an encouraging sign that we are able to do this. What's social media's role been in this? Social media plays a very important role because there's a lot of talk going on and people form ideas. But a lot of the talk on social media starts right here in the conventional media. There will be a story here. It goes up on a platform, Twitter or whatever it is. Then there's comments and debate and argument. But the, the conversation often starts here and then continues there. But social media also played an important role in, in uh, the protests over George Floyd. And, uh, and as we saw, media coverage in, against, uh, of, of hate crimes against blacks was only about four articles per incident uh, prior to the George Floyd uh, incident. And then afterwards, it ran, uh, rose to almost six and a half. Yeah. So it's too soon to see if that helps make black communities safer. But we can already see that the media coverage is changing and that in turn, both social media prompted these protests and this attention and the media coverage then feeds back into social media as well.
It's fascinating. It's an eye-opening report. Daniel Pomerantz. Daniel, thanks very much for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.